Hello my friend, my new van is done. And I think this is one of the most affordable new van builds out there. So I'm really excited to help bring it to market. Thanks to TimberVanKits.com for sponsoring this video. This is the Timber Van Kit. And it starts at under $25,000 installed on the Sprinter, Transit, or Promaster vans. The build behind me, I'm gonna show you, is at around 39,000 with all the optional upgrades I chose to go with. So let's hop inside and take a look around. Woo! <laughs> Welcome inside. I'm gonna show you around and give you all the technical details momentarily. First, I want to highlight a couple things I really liked about this build. First and foremost is the price point. I looked around on the market right now for new van builds and a large majority of them are around 200 to $300,000. That is an extremely high price for a traveling vehicle. Really, you just need something functional, spacious, simple to use and this van fits that build. There's so much room in here. It's not over complicated. You don't have to worry about things breaking right and left. It doesn't make sense in my mind to spend 200 to $300,000 on a build when you can get something much more affordable and with the money that you save, you could go optionally buy some land, a yurt or an off-grid cabin. That's my thoughts on the subject. Maybe you want a 200 to $300,000 build and that's totally your thing. This is all I need. The timber van kit includes a water system, bed, electrical, cabinetry, floors, paneling, and insulation. You can optionally choose upgrades including a finished upholstered panel kit, finished wood, windows, a heater, a fridge, and a fan. I haven't even told you the best part. If you're a DIY person and you're looking to save even more money, Timber is also introducing a van kit version that will ship directly to your door starting at $15,995 with free shipping. It'll come with clear installation instructions so you can install and assemble yourself. Maybe you don't want the whole kit right now though, and that's okay too. They also offer the van kit components for purchase a la carte on their website, timbervankits.com. So you can build your van at your own pace. So make sure you click the link below in the description to choose which options you choose on your van build. Another thing I really liked about this build is the bed. You can't see it entirely yet. I'll pull it out for you in a second, but it's actually a telescoping bed. It extends out to a monster bed. <laughs> but it also lifts out entirely. So maybe you wanna use the van to haul things. You can put your motorcycle here. It telescopes down to this single size bed. So I could put the motorcycle here, but still sleep right there. All in all, there's just a lot of options and functionality to it. Another really cool thing that I wanna point out about this build is if you'll notice on either side of the van, there's this extended space for the possibility of sleeping east to west. A lot of times in these Sprinter vans, they cut this entire panel out and use something called a flare. So it's a composite, it's off the exterior of the van and not only does it make it less aerodynamic it's an additional couple thousand dollars minimum by using the space that's already present in the van you're avoiding that cost but you're also extending your sleeping area the ceiling and the panels are made of baltic birch they're insulated with 30 millimeter D-mat synthetic insulation. You can choose to either get the Baltic Birch unfinished that you can seal, paint, or stain it yourself, or you can get them finished, which is wrapped in this nice gray tweed. The floors are made of Baltic Birch with a single sheet of this nice coin dot flooring. The van is lit by six LED lights on the ceiling. So you control with two light switches. One being right up front by the driver's seat, which is highly convenient because if you're up front, you can reach behind you and turn the lights on and off. But there's also a light switch in the back by the bed. If you're laying in bed and you don't want to get up to turn the lights off, you can just reach up and shut them off. You can also dim them. So as you hold them down, they go off. Then you can dim them back up. As you can see, there's plenty of storage space down below the bed. You could put kayaks here, bikes, suitcases, surfboards, you name it, there's lots of space, which is a huge plus. To my right and left, you'll see a lot of storage as well. There's three cabinets, which is one, two, 
three. Three large cubbies to my right and one large cubby to my left. This gives you a possibility of adding bins in here for a lot of storage. They did not use cabinets that open right here because it often impedes things that are sitting here. So if you had a kayak sitting here and you had a cabinet you had to open, it's just gonna constantly bang into the kayak when you try to open it. You also have your fresh water storage down here to my left. There's 20 gallons of fresh water. In front, there is a pantry storage area, and you'll also find the electrical system in the back. The timber van kit uses the Yeti 1500 to supply power to the electronics in the van. This, however, is the Yeti 3000, because if you think that you'll need more power, you can upgrade to one of the higher versions, such as the 3000 or the 6000. It provides both DC and AC power, the DC for the water pump, the lights, the heat in the diesel heater, the fridge, and the fan. But there's also AC power that you can use for an induction cooktop, your Starlink, or the essentials such as my hair dryer or curling iron. You can also charge this system three different ways, two being primarily the 200 watts of solar on the roof as well as alternator charging while you're driving. If you do need to plug into shore power, you can, and you can also remove this entirely from the van and use it elsewhere, plug it back in. The system's pretty straightforward. Up above, you'll see the 12 volt DC power box and to the right of it is the dimmer light system. Welcome to the other side of the van. As you can see, it is still very spacious in here. You'll see the galley area, which includes a nice countertop for cooking, a sink. Up top we have a deep bay stainless steel sink with a little water dispenser that has a 12 volt water pump. To the left right here there is the control button to turn the water pump on and off. Inside the cabinet you'll find two six gallon gray water tanks for a total of 12 gallons. They're each connected with quick release mounts so they're really easy to remove and they both have a valve on them so once one fills up you can close off that valve and open up the other. Really nice you can just remove them from the van, dump them out, and then stick them back in. Storage cabinets up above the kitchen. They're soft clothes with gas struts and look at all the storage for the tasty snacks. Here we have an 130 liter isotherm fridge. I chose to go with the optional upgrade for the fridge because I cook so much, but you don't have to do that. Maybe you don't use your van as much. You could just use a cooler that you take in and out of the van. And if you choose not to go with a fridge, this is just a huge storage cabinet. Maybe down the line, you decide you want to put a fridge in. They still leave the wiring there available so you can upgrade to a fridge at a later time. I had to keep all my fun pizza ingredients in there so we can make pizza on the adventures. The outlet by the galley is also in a great location because I can plug in my induction cooktop right here. And then, my favorite area. Down below the passenger seat is the diesel heater. This is the Evo 40. This particular diesel heater has been calibrated for high elevation camping, which means that it should work even when I'm camping up in the mountains. Some of them are not calibrated for that, so make sure you pay attention to that if you're looking into diesel heaters. My van did not come with the swivel seats, so Alpine Mechanisms was kind enough to send out two swivel plates and timber van kits helped me install them. I think that they really open up the functional space of the van. You can sit and work, you can hop up and grab a snack. Without them, you're really stuck with a more separate area. So check them out, Alpine Mechanisms. Go for the swivel seats. <laughs> Moving to the back of the van, you'll have and find another water pump switch to my left and a wonderful wash down system for, you know, washing off feet, legs, bathing suits after jumping in the river. There's a water fill area right here for the 20 gallon water tank. It's the size of a standard garden hose obviously use an RV hose for potable water. Down below, you'll see the extendable exterior spray down system. And then at the very bottom, there's a three-way valve filling it off and exiting the vehicle. There's a vent for the tank and a fill line right here so you can visually see how much water is actually in your tank. And this is a prime example of the functionality of this van. It's simple. You don't have to have some crazy electronic sensor inside your water tank that monitors how much water that can 
possibly go bad. You just use your eyeballs to see how much water is left in the tank. Hopefully you have those or you can't drive the van, so. Make sure you have your glasses on. <laughs> I told you the bed was nice and spacious up here. There's plenty of room for activities like, you know, playing Monopoly, doing some yoga, movie night. And instead of just taking my word for it and trusting me, I figured I'd pull out my handy dandy tape measure and give you actual proof of just how big it is. So, from back to front, we're at Ah, almost 76, almost 76 inches, 75 and a half. And from the side, we're at roughly 65 and a half inches. Now that is for the mattress alone. For sleeping space, granted these are all approximations and are going to change based on which van you have. In the Sprinter with the side spaces there is approximately 72 and a half inches at the front of the sleeping area and 71 inches <laughs> in the back area just a good amount of space for reference i'm about i'm a little under five seven my head is not hitting there's about an inch right here i think the transit van is wider but you could go diagonal and then front to back. There's plenty of sleeping area. For reference, this is a 2023 144 wheelbase high roof sprinter. And the roof is approximately 75 and a quarter. So if you're tall, above six foot, you should still be okay. I promise I'm not going to measure everything in here, but if you really want me to, we can. <laughs> and this is why I love this bed system, because if you want more space, you can just collapse the bed in, tighten the little knobs on the bottom, and sleep with the mattresses stacked like this. Everybody likes a little bit more cushion, right? And just like that, you have an area for a solo sleeper. The sleeping space here is about 65 and a half inches long by 37 and a half inches deep. And technically, if you always wanna sleep like this and you never wanna extend the bed, you could just remove one of these mattresses and store it elsewhere. Up to my right corner, you'll find two 110, 120 outlets, two 12 volt USB outlets, and the light switch. So if you're in bed and you don't want to hop down, you can turn the lights off really easily. Up to my left are more cubby storage. To my right and left, you have two awning windows, so that provides ventilation. You can open them while it's raining. They also have a built-in bug screen to keep all the bugs out. Keeps it nice and ventilated in here. With the addition of the fan, which you can operate with a remote that is stored also on the wall. This is nice because you can bring air in, you can bring air out, you can turn it on and off with a flip of a button. <laughs> so many cool features that I've never used before. I believe this is the Max Air 7500. It's got the rain shield so you can use it when it's rainy and it also has the tinted cover so it helps with temperature control during the summer. And if you're somebody who loses your remotes all the time, it doesn't matter because you can still control it with the buttons right on the fan. And I think that about wraps up the van tour. Make sure you check out TimberVanKids.com to see which options you would choose on your van build. Remember, they do it on the Sprinter, Transit, and ProMaster. So even if you don't like the Sprinter vans, there's other options. I'm also chose to not include any of my belongings in the van so you could see it, how much space there is, envision how you could use it as well. Next week, stay tuned, I'll actually be using it in an adventure. We'll see how the Mercedes does. I've also driven this van now around 6,000 miles so I have a better idea of how I feel about it. I'm excited to share that with you. So stay tuned and thanks for hanging out with me. See you next week.